Hello everyone, welcome to Nesso Academy. In the previous lecture, we understood why we should learn C++ programming language. Apart from this, we also understood the syllabus, target audience, prerequisites and the course highlights. Now we are in this lecture. This is the second lecture of this course and the name of this lecture is Key Terms in Programming. In this lecture, we will understand what are the key terms which are associated with programming in general, which we need to understand before moving forward in this course. So, without any further delay, let's get started with this lecture and let's see what are the topics of this lecture. There is only one topic of this lecture and the name of this topic is Key Terms. Let's proceed further and let's understand what are the key terms associated with the programming language in general. The first key term is program, code, source, code. These are the three terms which mean the same thing that is sequence of instructions written by humans. So when we write a sequence of instructions, we call it a program, a code or a source code. We can choose any of these names to refer to sequence of instructions. Instructions are meant for a computer to execute. We write some instructions for a computer to execute and the sequence of those instructions is what we call a program, a code or a source code. I hope this is clear to you. Now let's move to the second term which is machine code. Machine code is the code that can run on a machine. Let's compare source code with machine code. Let's understand what's the difference between the two. Source code is the sequence of instructions written by us. On the other hand, machine code is the code that can run on a machine. This means source code is something which we humans can understand and interpret. Machines cannot understand source code. We need to translate source code to machine code. And machine code is something which computers can understand. So I hope it is clear to you. In order to execute the source code, we need to convert it to machine code so that it can run on a machine. I hope it is clear to you. Now here comes the third term, statement. Statement refers to type of instruction. There are many different types of instructions in C++ programming language. We call an instruction a statement. As we proceed further in this course, we will learn different types of instructions. But right now, we just need to understand that an instruction in programming language is called a statement. Now, here comes the fourth term, which is syntax. Syntax refers to rules of a programming language. There are many different rules in a programming language in general. In C++ programming language also, we have a set of rules which we need to follow as programmers. We will learn these rules as we proceed in this course. But right now we need to understand that these rules are called syntax. So syntax of a programming language is nothing but rules of a programming language. Now here comes the fifth term which is compiler. Compiler is a software that translates source code to machine code that two in one go. So compiler is indeed a translator which translates source code to machine code in one go. By one go I mean it takes the entire source code and translate it to machine code. I hope it is clear to you. So, compiler is a software which translates source code to machine code in one go. Now, we have learned five terms. Let's move to the sixth term. Sixth term is interpreter. Interpreter is a software that translates source code to machine code line by line. Interpreter is also a translator, just like compiler. But it works differently. It does not take the entire source code and convert it to machine code. It takes source code line by line. That is, it takes one line of source code at a time and convert it to machine code. I hope it is clear to you. So with this, we have understood six terms in total. Now let's move to the seventh term. Seventh term is execution. Execution refers to the process of running a program. 
सो रनिंग अ प्रोग्राम इज इक्विवेलेंट टू एग्जीक्यूटिंग अ प्रोग्राम दे बोथ मीन द सेम सो एग्जीक्यूशन एंड रनिंग अ प्रोग्राम बोथ आर वन इन द सेम नाउ हेयर कम्स द एट टर्म विच इज सिंटेक्स एरर वी लर्न वॉट सिंटेक्स इज syntax refers to rules of a programming language now what is the meaning of syntax error syntax error is a mistake in the syntax of the code if we commit a mistake in the syntax of the code then we call it syntax error because here we are breaking one of the rules of a programming language so whenever we break one of the rules of a programming language we are committing a syntax error let me give you an example to make it clear to you in c++ programming language most of the statements end with a semicolon if you forgot to add a semicolon then we will get syntax error because we are breaking one of the rules of the programming language that is ending a statement with semicolon i hope it is clear to you now with syntax error our program will not be able to execute at all so it is important to address syntax errors properly now i would like to tell you that syntax error is not the only type of error that can occur in a programming language like c++ there are many different types of errors the second type of error is logic error this is also the ninth term in this list now let's try to understand what is logic error logic error is a mistake that produces wrong result understand the difference between syntax error and logic error syntax error occurs when we make a mistake in the syntax of the code that is we break one of the rules of the programming language logic error occurs when we make a logical mistake in the code that produces the wrong result this means our program will execute but it will not give us the correct result it will give us the wrong result for example it is possible that in our program we may decide to add two numbers instead of adding two numbers we subtracted those numbers so as the result we will get the subtraction of those numbers we will not get the addition of those numbers so this is the logical error this is the error that produces the wrong result it is not the case that our program will not execute it will execute but we will get the wrong result so this is what logic error is all about i hope it is clear to you now here comes the third type of error and the 10th term in this list which is run time error it is the error during program execution so this error occurs when program executes now what do i mean by this at the time of executing the program if an error occurs then we will call that error run time error now you might be thinking what's the difference between logic error and run time error logic error also occurs at the time of execution it is the error that produces the wrong result this means that the program executes and at the time of execution we are getting the error here also i am saying that during program execution we are getting the error so what's the difference between these two the difference lies in this fact that logic error does not make our program crash understand with logic error it is only possible that we will get the wrong result our program will execute successfully but in case of run time error our program make crash it is possible that at some point in time our program will stop executing anymore let's take one example to understand this let's say in our program we decided to divide a number by 0 now division by 0 is not allowed it is not allowed in programming language as well so if we try to do this then we will get run time error this is not the syntax error there is nothing wrong with the syntax of the code but at the time of execution our program will crash it will not execute anymore so that is why we call it run time error 
I hope it is clear to you what is the meaning of runtime error. Now let's move to the 11th term in this list, that is bug. Bug refers to error in a program. So bug is simply an error in a program. And debugging refers to the process of finding and fixing bugs. So bug in a program refers to error in a program. And the process of finding and fixing that bug is what we call debugging. I hope it is clear to you. So these are the 12 terms which we have understood and these are the key terms which are important for us to proceed further in this course. This means we are done with this topic and we are done with this lecture also. Okay friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation. I will see you in the next one.